Welcome to the TSG video podcast for November 1st. Is this is this accurate, Dan? Are we really almost at the end of the year? We only have one more video podcast this year. <laughs> yeah, I uh, know. It's hard to believe, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's John sitting with Dan, as usual. And we're back again for another video podcast. And uh, this looks like a caboose. It is. This is a... Uh... Work in progress. Uh, this is actually a pretty heavily modified Atherin caboose that I'm uh, building into a model of a Burlington Northern caboose. Okay. And I've done a lot of work on it. Um, the particular caboose I'm modeling had the windows, uh, or didn't have any windows on the side, so I, I filled in all the windows and puttied them and sanded them and then did some test paint on them to see if their seams were really filled and then in a couple cases might have filled them some more and then sand it again. Um, I also added some these little panel indentations or whatever they are to the roof here. It's almost um, like corrugated something or other. Yeah, because this, this car, the way it was modeled, it had them on every panel but this one, uh, except for the ends are blank, but that's supposed to be that way. But anyway, so I did that and I also I, I raised the cupola height by about a scale six inches. And, wow, uh, really? I mean, six inches? I mean... It made a difference because the original really? cupola on these, I think these are modeled after a caboose that was made for the Reading Railroad oh. and later Conrail. Um, and the BN cabooses were similar, but they had a sli I think they had a slightly taller cupola. It's probably because in, in the East Coast, a lot of times their clearances aren't as high yeah. as we have here. So um, anyway, and then I also um, redid the windows because the the original windows were more rectangular and these were more square on the BN version. I added some grab irons. I still have to add some more grab irons and things. But uh, also, a big modification was the, the steps because the Atlas caboose comes with uh, a two step uh, design and this is actually a three step design. So, I these steps are from a company called Moloco and the platforms too. And I also changed, uh, I added the extended cushion. Uh, Coupler pockets, which are details west part, I believe. Wow, what a pain! I mean, they re nobody makes this thing for real. Well, if, not unless you want to buy it in brass, and oh, you know, those are usually costs a lot more. Yeah, though. those usually are quite a bit of money. Oh. So, you know, this still has a ways to go. But um, what I wanted to do to it today, the reason I was brought it on the podcast, is I want to actually add um, DCC to this car. Okay. When it's finished, I want to add a, a function-only decoder so that I can put lights in it. Because these cars, uh, they had a little. It'll have a little red light right here that I'd All like right. to be able to turn on. And there's another little sort of a spotlight kind of a thing, which if I can make that work would be kind of neat. And there's also the possibility of putting a light in the interior. Yeah. But of course, to do all that, you need to have power coming into the car. And these cars weren't designed with any kind of electrical pickup. I think that's kind of would be rare on a any kind of a rolling stock anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, some somewhat. Uh, now I know you do passenger cars with pickups and stuff. We even had a an N-scale passenger car that you modified once. Yeah, it on depends. The podcast, so. Some some of the cars um, nowadays do come with it. Like, I have this Atherin caboose, which is, this is a Southern Pacific caboose. But uh, this is one of their new Genesis cabooses. Hmm. And this actually has DCC pre-installed in it. Oh really? Yeah, and these trucks. Um, oh, I are can actually, see. I can see some brass down here. Yeah, or copper. They're or actually outfitted already um, huh. with electrical pickup, which is kind of neat. That is kind of cool. Um, and that would actually be one possibility for this car, as I believe Atherin sells these trucks separately. Oh, so they're like pickup trucks, huh? I mean, well, <laughs> I don't mean sort of. <laughs> well, I just made a pun. I didn't even intend to. That was pretty funny. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that would be that would be one one idea to to get power into it would just be to change the trucks out and use the Genesis yeah. trucks if you can get some. Um, but I've decided to do a different approach, and uh, I'm going to use the the standard Atherin or, or I mean Atlas trucks. Right. But I'm just going to add some pickups to them, and there is a, a company called. Uh, Streamline Backshop Services, sps4dcc.com is their website. That's a four, like the number four. Um, and they make these little kits. It has these uh, copper pieces 
which uh, will get the, actually rub on the wheels and will get power. And then these are some insulating washers. All right. Well, sounds exciting. I mean, I, this is a heck of a kit bash job. I mean, it seems like you're doing a lot of work just to put the thing together. It is. It is a lot of work. So, um, you know, maybe if you if you counted the labor time, maybe it would be better to buy a brass caboose. Yeah. But even if you did, you'd still <laughs> want to get it to pick up power. So um, then you get those Genesis things you were talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. So anyway, this is what the pickup looks like when it's bent. And they do sell these pre-bent also. They're a little more expensive that way. But um, I opted to get the unbent ones and just bend my, my own. I did have to, um, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a bit of a jog right here that I had to put into it. Otherwise, these uh, contact pieces weren't uh, close enough to the wheel. Okay. You know, it almost seems like they could have been... Well, I guess it wouldn't have contacted properly. I was going to say it could have just been bent kind of straight. Do you know what I mean? Like on this plane, like that. But I yeah. don't think it would have contacted the way you want it to. I think you... I think the idea is that this this big surface here rides against the back of the wheel. Right. Which, by the way, if you're like me and you like to weather your wheels, um, and I, I usually paint the backs of them too, just in, so that in case anything shows while the car's going by on the track, um, you'd have to scrape that off. Otherwise, this won't work. In fact, I just did that with this set. I I got my Dremel tool out with a wire brush and uh, buzz the paint off the rear faces of the wheels. Otherwise, this won't pick up anything. Yeah. But um, this just fits over the bolster, kind of. And um, you can see how it kind of rides along the back side. That's yeah, pretty cool. I, I have to. I don't think it's going to stay here unless I hold it. Yeah. But yeah, see, each of these pieces should be contacting the wheel. It looks like a good way to do it too, because it's almost it's more Oops, hidden. Now you know? the truck wants to roll away. Yeah, we've seen others. Let me just back the camera. We've seen others in the weathering and detailing videos. I think we may have also done this on a podcast once, where you put an ele electrical pickup for. Yeah, we did. It was on an N scale uh, passenger car. Mm -hmm. that I'd mentioned before it was a coach or something. Yeah, but this actually seems like there's more contact, and it's in a less conspicuous place. Look at that, it's just running away. <laughs> All right, so I've glued the um, first pickup to the truck. It was just some CA glue. And now I'm going to glue on this insulating washer. Oh, this I see. You're going to put one on the other side, too? Yeah, you could just use one on, you know, use one truck for one rail and one truck for the other rail, but that wouldn't be a very reliable way to get power because then you're only using two wheels on each side of the car. I'd rather use all the wheels for yeah. um, you know less chance of flickering. But if you do that, you know, it would short out if you didn't have the insulator. Oh right, because you can't have both tracks touching each other. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh so I'm now I'm gonna glue the other pickup on top of that washer. Yeah, you know it's that whole thing about having more than you need instead of not enough. You know, it's always yeah. better to have more. In this case, we're talking about contact with the wheels that contact the yeah. rails, So, Especially with DCC, um, it, it, it's pretty sensitive to interruptions in the um, current flow. Yeah. So uh, anything you can do to improve that is usually a good idea. So this is the finished assembly here. And... There, you could actually put another washer on the top of this if you wanted to, um, although I'd, I don't think I have room to. It was, would uh, make my car ride too high. All right. Um, and I don't. In this car, this car's plastic anyway, so there's really not any reason to do that. I guess if you had a brass car, you might want to insulate this part from the body. Um, I think you'd really have to, wouldn't you? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you were really careful to put the upper pieces so they both got the same rail but then of course you'd still have ha ha the car you know with track power in the body which really probably isn't a good idea um, anyway w w this gives you lots of places to uh, solder wires to there's three contacts on each pickup so you can whatever's convenient for the car you're working on you can just solder a little wire to that and then run that up into the car body and yeah. you've got your power and of course you just repeat this whole procedure with the other truck and uh, it still seems to roll fairly well 
I think once it's in a car with weight on it, it should work pretty good. Okay, the last thing is I just want to recheck the coupler height to make sure that I didn't mess it up by adding that extra material down there, and it looks like it's still good. Yeah, it matches right up there. Yeah. Wow, good job. So, because uh, I already had this car kind of dialed in that way, so, um, you know, didn't want to have to go back to the drawing board, especially because it's, in this particular car, with the way that the the couplers are set up, it would be really hard to adjust it. Well, this point. I guess the design is pretty good then, because it didn't affect anything. It just added contact to the wheels. Yeah. Which was the whole point. So, so I do wow. notice it makes a little bit of noise when it rolls, but possibly that might uh, go away a little bit if I maybe put some contact lube or something on the back. Yeah. Well, besides, if you have your locomotive running and all the other noises on the layout, you probably won't even hear it. Yeah. So, but you'll have some pretty cool lights in there once the decoder and everything's installed. So, yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe when this caboose is a little more finished or, or finished, uh, we can bring it back for another appearance. Yeah. You know, I wanted to mention that uh, I think somebody had emailed or posted a comment on YouTube that had to do with adding uh, electric to a car, either a oh. rolling stock or a caboose or something. Well, this is a way to do that. So, so, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if you, if I had forwarded that to you or not. I, I vaguely but, remember something about it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well then, there you go. There's there's <laughs> the answer, right, to whoever it was. I, I just, I yeah. really don't remember. But. Yeah, I mean, I've used other methods too. This is just a method, but, uh, you know, it's uh, definitely something to consider. Well, well, there you have it. Now you know where to get them and what they are and how to put them on. So, I guess that'll do it for this month's video podcast. Uh, tune in next month. This will be the last video podcast of the year coming up on December 1st, so yeah. it seems a little strange that 2012 is almost gone already, but whatever, yeah. it just, you know, that's just <laughs> what happens, you know? Yeah. So, and then of course the audio podcast is on the 15th as usual, and turn your friends on to our Facebook and YouTube pages, uh, we're always trying to build up more audience, so if you like what we do, make sure to like it and and subscribe on YouTube and you know you'll get content in both places that you don't get anywhere else so yeah anyway all right well uh, I guess that's it so thanks for watching yeah thanks